Hi, mindful language learners. My name is Emily. Welcome back to the language wellness and identity podcast. If you're a regular listener, make sure to give the podcast a five-star rating. If you really do enjoy it. If you are new, I'm super glad you're here. I did create this podcast as a compliment to my YouTube channel, language travel adoptee. And here I give you the tools and perspectives you need to ground yourself and value the language learning process, even when it gets hard. Here we go beyond strategic ways to learn a language. We investigate the vulnerable parts and emotions of the language learning experience that really make us human. If you are looking for an unpolished, unapologetic look into the process, I am here for you and I want you to know you're not alone. Make sure to follow the podcast for weekly episodes around these topics. Now, I find that to continue my language learning journey with joy, that meant also discovering how I can become a more resilient, confident, and self-compassionate language learner, able to withstand situations ranging from uncomfortable to outright painful experiences, and really confronting those complicated relationships with languages that pose roadblocks in learning. That is why I created the Mindful Multilinguals Collective. Now, I only open doors three times a year, so join the waitlist in the show notes if you do feel stuck, overwhelmed, self-critical, or so ambitious in your goals, you forget to take care of your own well-being. You too can step into your resilient, confident, and consistent language learning self with a tight-knit community. Now sit back, relax, and let's get started with a new episode. To give you guys some context about this episode today, I have had so many reflections come out of this trip to Berlin. I originally did not think that I was going to make it over there this year, um, financially speaking. But luckily, I was able to get tickets and really visit when Berlin is its prettiest. So I really enjoy the Berlin summers. And I remember that is the season I was waiting for. I had actually lived in Berlin back when the pandemic hit in 2020. And it was devastating for me to all of a sudden have to uproot myself. I had had a visa that was going to last another two or three years. And so I was fully in the mental state of, I will stick through with this visa and stay here and just kind of see what happens. And if I need to reevaluate my position, then I will go back to the US or I will go to another country, but I'm going to stay here for three years. Well, that didn't happen. And I left after only about a year. That is where, of course, I discovered my love for making content. So that was a good thing that came out of it. But it does raise a question, you know, about the places and the people that impact our language learning, and really the circumstances that surround it, right? Because language learning, as we all know, is not just, you know, sitting at the textbooks and listening and, you know, that's all good and well, and it works for certain learners depending on how we like to learn the most. But I think even more, and I think a lot of language learners can agree with me, is that we enjoy truly the experiences that come away from the learning and really experiencing the language and life. I guess I see language learning, right, as a filter over our lives. So thinking of a camera lens, right, our lives, especially, and this is just coming from me because obviously I'm super passionate about learning languages, but, you know, my life has just always had you know, different filters on it and switching between the languages is like switching through another filter on a camera lens, right? And it really enhances the image. It makes it give it an, a different tint, a different glow and perspective that you never really knew you needed or wanted. I have not been able to recreate any of the experiences that I have had in Berlin in terms of language learning in the place that I'm learning and living now. So it's been really challenging. It was a very big grieving process to come back from a place that was so strongly tied to my identity as a language learner in Berlin. I mean, there were so many places you could, you wouldn't even have to go to language learning meetups if you didn't want to or booking classes, right? There were so many uh, shops that spoke my target languages and you could just go in there and just hear so many people on the street talking and do your listening comprehension for the day. And I truly, I guess, felt 
most like a language learner when I was there. Now that I'm back in the United States, it's a whole nother story, but I did decide to go back to Berlin after three years of not doing pretty much any international travel. My reflections from that have really given me a lot to think about. I'm going to break down all of those thoughts in separate episodes because I think they all deserve more detail than what I think what I usually do a 10 to 15 episode that would not do all of these things justice. I want to address at least one of the reflections of all the reflections that come to mind at first. You know, I remember hopping on a plane with no return ticket to Berlin. Even before that, I remember living for the first time in Germany as a student. Even before that, I remember studying abroad all alone for the very first time in Europe, and that was in Italy. I did have a return ticket, but that was the first time that I had been truly doing something by myself abroad. Most of the people in my program had been coming with all of their friends, so I was the one of the only students who had come from my university alone in the US. And comparing my feelings back then to, you know, how I felt two days ago when I was still in Berlin just visiting um, some friends and visiting some of my favorite places, your potential truly lies out of your comfort zone. It's so cheesy and repetitive until one day it's just true because you've lived it. Now, I talk about mindfulness, but I also coach language learners to kind of assess if one needs to take a step back due to needing to reflect and take care of yourself, or are you getting in your own way and needing to be your own biggest cheerleader and just do the damn thing? In this case, it's definitely the latter for me that I had to coach myself through. And as we reflect on how it felt to just walk the streets of Berlin three years after working there, five years after living in Germany for the first time, seven years after I ventured out on my own, three, two, three days ago, Berlin quickly felt like home. A contrast existed between this and knowing I was ready to move on from the city. I think partially because I knew it never had to move on from me in the first place. And it would always be there either for me or some other wide-eyed, bright-eyed person to discover it for the first or second or uh, third or fifth time as I had to. But on the other hand, I sensed a strange comfort that you know, I had had, especially by the end of the week, I didn't have a lot of comfort in that place in the very beginning. I'd stayed there for about 10 days. It really took me about almost a week to feel the sense of comfort again. But again, there was no culture shock, no struggles with the language. There was predictability about how to use, you know, public transport, um, which of course I didn't grow up using in the United States. Um, so it, it was always a little bit of a scary thing to use for the first time or even the fifth or sixth time when I landed in Europe. But I knew also, you know, what kinds of people to expect to see there, you know, where the stores were, even the smell of the subway <laughs> it didn't smell bad, but it was definitely a distinct smell that I remember from three years ago, seven years ago, even I would never have believed this feeling was possible for me. I would have never even thought that this was an interest that I would have in the future. And so language learners, it's for me, this is a testimony to always encourage you as well as others to fight for being uncomfortable. Okay. If you've already taken, you know, mindful of your well-being, knowing what's right for you, knowing that you are not pushing yourself past your healthy limits, right? Fighting for being uncomfortable and championing it. I always want to encourage you to reflect on what differences you've observed in your own language learning journey. Even if you currently feel stuck and those changes may seem small or trivial until you truly reflect about where you also were seven years ago. And maybe you really have to be in the place like I did to see it or maybe it's just the feeling of a newfound comfort and confidence within you that you realize was not there before. You know, whatever this is for you, give yourself a moment of pause in your day today and really reflect and applaud what you've accomplished. And I'm already thinking about you confirming aloud to yourself what all you have been through 
I have heard so many already of your stories, listeners of the podcast, but also of my YouTube channel who have come forth with their own language stories to me. Maybe they were learning their heritage languages. Maybe they had overcome um, some of the envy and some of the true discomfort and painful experiences that are all wrapped up in her very human emotions. I truly admire and I truly honor what you guys have all shared with me throughout these past few months as they've become more active on the podcast. So I'm celebrating you right now. Also really wanting to remind you, right? You are enough in this moment, just as you were then, but you have come so far and you have stepped into your evolved self, whatever that looks like for you. And that deserves celebrating. So I'd love for you to, you know, answer the question at the end of this episode and you can write me your answer below sort of where the polls section is. What changes have you sensed in you over the last five to seven years as a language learner. Now, make sure to give this podcast a five-star review if you did enjoy it. Follow it for more if you have not. And uh, I'm bringing on a few exciting guests in the coming episodes, so you want to stay tuned for that. And I really hope that this episode has made you feel less alone today. Your story matters no matter where you are in your journey. Be kind, be vulnerable, and I will see you in another episode very soon.